can't see because I'm almost... Oh, that's alright. No, it's not, you dick. My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop. You have to suck, look at the back of my head a minute while I'll fucking sort this out. Uh, and it's piston that's... So today, the plane's back. Yeah. This is a shit video, Matt. You keep on walking up. He's literally right on. It's fucking. It's, it is her uncle. Great uncle, bastard. His name's Jerry. And it's a twin wing, twin engine, and I can't remember what he said he was. I was too tired and wasn't listening. This is an awesome video. <laughs> oh, roll the intro. My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and that was a load of fucking kerfuffling and that fucking plane, although I do like the sound of the engine. Hossack engine. So this is from our mate from Rhodesia. Those who don't know anything about world history, Rhodesia is now Zimbabwe, uh, thanks to the UDI. Right, so, the Hossack engine, which was a bit of a square piston, an actual square piston. So how the fucking hell do you do this? and um, how does it work and all the rest of it. So we have this weird shaped square piston and it doesn't actually sit like this, this is all completely wrong. Yeah, I have to move that to there. I don't know why I made that mistake, all that drawing and fucking around for no reason. But yeah, so crankshaft just as normal and all the rest of it and then this square piston. And what you have is you have um, these two ports either side with this one being the exhaust I'll show you some pictures it's it's so much better you're just gonna have to um, no that's not inlet that's transfer transfer so basically this incorporates a few things from a um, a wankel and a piston engine so basically what it is, is it's a piston with a rigidly fixed conrod. There is no pivot point here. There is no um, fucking pen. There is no pivot point there um, for a wrist pin, gudgeon pin, whatever you want to call it. And basically what happens is, is the piston itself rocks. Now, as long as um, the uh, geometry is right, as long as these two points that rock basically remain the same distance apart then you can seal the cylinder so as it kicks out and rocks um, these two points have to basically touch the inside of the cylinder you can see a lot better from an animation that I'll put up right now but basically what happens is is that at the bottom of the crankcase you have a carb so this is a crankcase breathing engine a lot of people um, were asking questions and a bit confused how this engine works but basically on your um, transfer port uh, your transfer port basically bridges from your um, bottom of your crankcase to your top of your crankcase. This is one of the limitations with the engine. Uh, the fact is that you have this transfer port like this. It means that there's no transfer port on the side. You could put one, um, and that's why it has this weird, and I'll circle it in the picture, that's why it has this weird little transfer port hole, basically a piston window. And as the piston, and as he calls it, as the lobe comes down, the lob comes down and it basically just um, allows flow to go in through this transfer, transfer port. So if we look at it from the side, you would have your piston, which is basically like this, with a rod, solid fixture really, so we should get rid of that, like so. And then on the side of your wall, you have uh, your cylinder in a sense like this and your cylinder like this and then it has a hole actually in your piston skirt and obviously as it comes down this then has a transfer port like this which is part of the outer cover that you can see 
and when these line up it obviously just does that into the into the engine and the exhaust port um, the beautiful thing about this is because you have this rocking motion as you can see from the animation stuff it means that you get transfer and then you uh, you get exhaust first because it's tipping down this side so you have your two ports like this and this is exhaust check out the new pen this is uh, transfer transfer like that and as the piston comes down the pistons like this so these two points here are in contact with the side of the wall it's not very well done <laughs> but basically you're closing off this transfer and then you're opening your exhaust so your exhaust gases get to go out but that's in a sense um, the issue, not issue, but your exhaust gases, all they're going to do is just expand. So now you're going to have a dilute exhaust inside your cylinder. And then what happens is, we can get rid of that, keep our ports like this, or in a sense like that. What happens is, is that then your piston levels up, and when your piston levels up like this, so it's now rotating up, you know, it's rocking at the bottom. Then your transfer can transfer in, and some of it will push uh, straight out of your exhaust pot. Hopefully it will go up and um, basically, you know, push, <laughs> push out your exhaust gases and all the rest of it. But some of it is just going to flow. It's just going to, it's going to expand outwards, that's the problem. And some of it will get trapped just like two strokes do and all the rest of it. So then what happens is, um, and this in a sense is the bit of a nifty thing about it, is it rocks again, obviously it's still transferring, it still rocks, and it closes off, um, as it's going up on the upstroke, it closes off your exhaust port, and then it's this transfer section where it goes into there, past the seal, and still goes into your cylinder. So now your cylinder filling. So what are the problems with this entire system? Oh, the other thing is as well is, is that you're kind of keeping the momentum in the piston or, or this lobe as he calls it um, because instead of just going up and down linearly the piston is going down but it's also then got this rotation so it's kind of doing this it's doing this weird little wobble thing instead of and like I say a bit more like a wankle so to speak in its um, the fact that it's a, an oscillation instead of just a linear um, up and down, you know, up, stop, down, stop, up, stop, down, stop. So you get to keep a bit of that. What are the limitations with this and the problem with this? You do get a, a, a good power stroke, that's a good thing, um, because it's an awful long way down the stroke. Um, like I say, you've got this motion of this cam lobe thing just, you know, basically joggling about. The problem with it is, is when you go to really high RPM or when you want to go to faster RP, RPM is that you look at the, the diagram in a sense, you know, and it's like this. It does need some optimization. that's what there is. Um, you could optimise this quite well. But, uh, you know, your ports are down here and that doesn't leave much for cylinder filling. And the fact that you block off your, um, your exhaust port while you're maintaining your inlet port means that you can't use um, what's it called now a back pressure from a, a, an expansion chamber you've closed off and you're still filling which is quite good you know what I mean that that's quite a good thing there's quite a good volumetric efficiency of this uh, you know but then your piston moves up and you've cut off your flow right there which is a bit more like a four stroke in a sense you are you're going to get higher compression ratios and what have you However, there are other issues with it, and the other issue with it is actual combustion. So when you come up, your crown here, that's a bit shit in it, your crown here like this, it's a weird shape to draw. <laughs> there we go. So you've got your seals here, and the seals, that's what we'll talk about first. The seals are, you have a blade like an apex seal, and you'll have a button on top of this, very much like a wankel apex seal, and then you'll have some side seals like this, again, very much like a wankel. Um, 
so you have these seals and the reason why you want this seal up here is because you don't want too much of it coming down the side and you have your transfer port here you have your your window so if you went straight from seal to seal you'd never seal the thing properly and you'd get reversion and all sorts of weird shit but yeah so you've got two apex seals we'll get rid of that altogether actually two apex seals in a sense like a wankel here and here um, but this is the problem this piston comes up and then it goes like that it rocks back down again which means that you get an awful lot of squish here which is a good thing um, but as you're closing the door the whole thing just wants to move this way and then when you go bang <laughs> this is the problem when you go bang you'll want your spark plug over here because everything's moving this way you've got an awful amount of squish this then just squishes at the last second and then when you go bang in a sense that is your problem is that you then do a, a, a flip reversal um, which means it's very hard to stabilize or it is quite difficult to stabilize combustion because now you're at the top what happens is is you'll have this and this is your power stroke where your flame has got to propagate but your flame is propagating into uh, not only an expanding region like it does normally with cylinders but it's not uniform and because the floor's dropping out of it as it's moving along so it's trying to move sideways which would be fine which is like a wankle but the floor's dropping out so it's it's a weird 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 combustion not only that is as you can see here there's a nip point here where all this is converging and then it kind of expands and then doesn't it's just such a weird um, a weird weird type of combustion and what this means is this is one of the problems is that the, your seals, you've got to remember your piston rings require uh, your seals require exhaust gases to force them against the cylinder wall it's going to be a hell of a lot different here than it is over here you know what I mean, the exhaust gases are going to reach incredible pressures really quickly here and it's going to take quite a long time and even when they do get here you're already, it's, already, it's just a weird thing the beautiful thing about piston rings is uh, on pistons with you know is that the whole ring is basically perpendicular to your, um, or parallel should I say, to your flame front. So your flame front in a sense is coming down and it's parallel to that and that's one of the beautiful things about it where with this it's really funky, it's such a um, I haven't done enough work on it, I haven't sat there and done enough uh, you know calculations and working out and stuff and I probably will do because I'd love to build one and I'd love to build a model one first and then like the easy engine and then go a big scale one day um, there are a few other things that it does give you benefits for, but I will talk about them in a different in, in a different uh, video because that's not what this actual design has. There are things you can do with this design um, to uh, optimise. There's some ideas that I've already had um, that wouldn't be a bad idea to do. But um, yeah, it was invented by uh, good old Norman who lives in California now. I'd love to go and speak to him in person. But uh, again, this is another reason why it was dropped. Um, it, you know, it is reduced parts. So that's what we'll talk about. Last thing we'll talk about is uh, what I was trying to remember. What I was going to go on about was the um, the construction of this thing. So we were talking about square pistons and all the rest of it. Where this is, uh, you know, this is a square piston, and or what you would say the cross section can either be square, square or rectangular. So what you do is you build a housing there and then you put plates on the side basically pretty much like you do with a wankel, that's the other thing it shares with a wankel is that it's a housing so this section here this section here just for simplicity is a cross section like this, it's a housing just like a wankel is You know, just like that, it's a housing uh, with loads of bolt holes and stuff that hold it together. And then these other side bits are just plates with vents on, uh, cooling fins, and then a couple of ports and where your exhaust attaches and all the rest of it. Um, so yeah, you know, it's it's a it's a sandwich construction, and the carb is fitted here in his actual running example. His carb is fitted right down on the bottom there, so it is a crankcase breathing engine. Um, it will still suffer from 
uh, two stroke oiling issues. This engine, and like I say, we'll go into this into a, in a different video completely because I want to do a couple of animations and um, a couple of really simple CAD stuff just to show you. Uh, one, talk about some of the problems uh, that the engine ultimately faces. But number two is to actually show you what, a couple of things that you can do. Uh, direct injection would suit this engine very, very well for the fact that as you close off the exhaust port, something like, on his example, it's like 20 degrees after bottom dead centre, which is really fucking early. Um, you know what I mean? That, that, that's super early, completely sealed off exhaust at 20 degrees after bottom dead centre. That's seriously early. And your exhaust but your inlet port is still is now wide that's it, it's wide open so um exo uh, you know uh, injection wise it's fine and the fact of matter is the weirdest thing is is that his pattern i think has run out so anyone could use this you know what i mean anyone could just pick up this engine and just run with it it does need a lot of development though there are a few things to do with it the other thing is which we'll talk about in the next video as well is um the issues with the rotational mass of having a con rod and a piston uh, attached together like that. Your primary vibrations and stuff are usually to do with your primary order of vibration. It's usually to do with your piston being reciprocating. This changes an awful lot when your piston is rocking when it oscillates instead of just having a reciprocating motion along one plane, you know, along one vector and back again. Um, it changes the stability of everything an awful lot. Uh, well, not an awful lot, but it, it, it does. It does need consideration. And it does actually put a lot of strain on some of the components uh, in, in a very particular way. But we'll cover that in a later video. Any road, that's an introduction to the Hossack engine. This is part of the alternate engine series. There's more, go and check them out. We talk about um, the Opok, the Wankel, stuff like that. We are going to, woo, we are going to cover the um, Oh, Duke engine, people keep on banging on about that. We're going to look at free valves, we're going to look at all this other stuff. And uh, the Deltic, the Napier, and uh, all these other engines and good stuff. There is so many to go looking through, and we're going to have some good fun doing it. Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.